Yesterday afternoon, I had a conversation with a young lady who was trying to decide, trying to evaluate between different lawyers, and the conversation involved, hey, what's your rate of success? How many cases do you get dismissed? How many cases do you get reduced? And what are the percentage of cases that go to trial? Those are really good questions. Ones that, uh, that if I were in that situation, I would definitely want to ask of a person. And the truth of the matter is that if most lawyers are telling you certain numbers and they're allowing you to draw certain conclusions from that, you're probably being really misled. Um, first, I don't know anyone outside of a couple of people who do a really good job of tracking the actual numbers of reductions. And usually, I find that they're not necessarily tracking them for themselves, they're tracking it for their associates who are practicing under them to have an idea of whether or not they're performing up to what are the standards in the community are. Um, second, you have to know that, that from each jurisdiction to jurisdiction, you're going to have wide variations in the numbers of cases that are reduced, the number of cases that are pled down to some other offense, the number of cases that are dismissed, the number of cases that are actually going to trial. Um, for most lawyers in the community, usually a, a sort of rough number is 10 to 20 percent of DUI cases go to trial. That's a pretty good measure in terms of the actual percentages. So the vast majority of cases are being resolved either through a DUI plea or a plea to some other lesser charge um, in there. So that's kind of the, that's sort of a rough measure in terms of, of how cases are typically resolved. Now, whether or not your cases can actually go to trial is something that no one under any set of circumstances, just talking to you on the phone, should be giving you a real indication of whether or not your case is probably going to go to trial. Now, there are some exceptions to that. For example, if, if you told me, well, let's just throw this out there as an example, um, that a person um, refused to submit to all field sobrieties and also refused to submit to a breath test, and they were in a handful of jurisdictions that hardly ever reduce a DUI, and I knew which judge and which prosecutor your case was assigned to. I could probably tell you that in just a few select jurisdictions, you would probably need to anticipate a trial in that sort of case with those sorts of facts. So there are some exceptions to that, but the overwhelming majority of cases, a lawyer should never be telling you during that initial conversation, yes, you need to be ready for a trial, or no, your case is going to be pled to a DUI or pled to some lesser lesser charge that, that may, may exist. So you really, that sort of decision really needs to be one that is made with a real contemplation of the evidence that's in your case. You need to know what your video looks like, what your incident report looks like, who your officer is, how well trained he or she is, before you make any of those sorts of decisions. Making a decision on that very limited amount of information in an initial phone call is really one that's made without much, much thought at all. Um, and it should be a lot more thoughtful than what than just that limited amount of information. Um, if you have any questions about this, think that I'm completely wrong or that I'm on the right track about this, feel free to leave a comment below. My name is Ben Sessions. My phone number is 470-225-7710. Thank you.